Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone. And today, Chris and I are here to talk about the upcoming GoPro Hero 11 Black Mini, which is supposed to be a compact, rugged, lightweight FPV camera. Well, it's, it's an action camera, but specifically going to be great for FPV pilots. Yeah, when GoPro announced this camera, I thought it would be the perfect replacement to my Hero 5 session, but that's not entirely true. Well, and the Hero 5 Session is six years old at this point, and it's even kind of been replaced already by the Action 2 from DJI. Now, the Action 2 has been my favorite for flying FPV recently, but it has drawbacks in terms of overheating and the fact that it does not have an SD card slot in the camera itself. You have to have an extension for that, which limits how long you can record for, and you might have problems with it overheating and shutting down if you fly in too hot of conditions. The Action 2 has rock steady, which is great for in-camera stabilization. But a lot of people prefer the results they get from Real Steady, which is a stabilization software that only works for GoPro cameras. So of course that brings us back to the Hero 11 Black Mini, which looks like it could potentially be great for FPV pilots, but does look like it has some drawbacks. Let's go through the pros and cons of it. So a couple things that I like about the Hero 11 Black Mini is first of all, it doesn't have a screen. And you may think, well, that's a downside, but in terms of durability, not having a screen is probably really gonna make it more durable. It also says on their website that it's built to be the most durable GoPro yet. We'll see once we get one. And then also it does have something that I think everyone appreciates about the most recent round of GoPros is that you can replace the lens if you crack it pretty easily. It sounds like it's quite rugged for sure, which is great, but the lack of front and rear screens might also be a downside. If you want to change advanced settings or playback footage or check exposure, you'll have to connect your phone and that might be a little bit of a hassle for some pilots. So if you do need a screen, you can always get the Hero 11 Black, not the Mini, but if you're gonna be flying FPV, I think not having a screen and it being slightly smaller and weighing less is actually a plus. Either way, it's the same internals. It's the same processor, it's the same sensor, and the footage I've seen from the Hero 11 Black looks fantastic, so I imagine the Mini will be as well. However, the Mini is also $100 cheaper than the Hero 11 Black. But the Mini is not really as small as you might think compared to the Hero 5 Session or the Action 2. So anyone who needs a compact action camera to mount on their FPV quads might be disappointed with the Mini 11. Yeah, and going back to the Action 2, which I am a big fan of, it does have some challenges with regard to how long it can actually record because it has an internal battery, so that means once it's dead, it's dead, and you have to recharge it. You can't just swap out the battery. And number two, it does have overheating issues. Our hope is that the GoPro Hero 11 Black Mini, because it's using Enduro batteries, which is GoPro's new technology for better battery life in extreme conditions, will last longer so that you can fly longer and also that they've worked things out with a built-in heat sink that will allow it to not overheat when you're flying in hot conditions or flying for a long time. As you mentioned, the battery is internal on the Hero 11 Black Mini, just like the Action 2 and the Session 5, but the 11 Mini weighs 133 grams, which is almost twice the weight of the Hero 5 Session and more than double the weight of the DJI Action 2. So if you're just concerned about weight, you might just want to buy the full size Hero 11 Black, remove the battery, and just plug in power from the LiPo battery of your quad. In that setup, you'll actually be three grams lighter than the 11 Mini Black. Or get the Hero 10 Bones, right? That's um, true, yeah. That one's designed for that sort of thing and it actually weighs a lot less. And it's not gonna have quite the same image as the Hero 11 because it's a Hero 10, but the Hero 10 is pretty darn good as far as the look goes. So one other thing that's interesting about the Hero 11 that I think is new is that it's recording an eight by seven aspect ratio image. So this image is going to allow you to crop in a lot of interesting ways. You could do an ultra widescreen, you could do really tall, you could do square, you could do um, just a little bit wide, like a four three aspect ratio. Any of those are possible because you have this really big recording that is uh, basically versatile for whatever platform you wanna put it out on. And I think that's pretty cool. So Chris, it sounds like there's pros and cons. You got any more negatives or cons about the mini black? Just the three negatives I mentioned earlier, that's all I can think of. And I'm not 
trying to be negative about GoPro. In fact, I really do like GoPro, mostly because of Real Steady, which I think is the easiest way to stabilize footage after the fact. Well, of course, this is all speculation at this point, so hopefully you've got some value out of it. If you're considering getting the GoPro Hero 11 Black Mini, the longest name in the world, please comment below. Let us know what you think about it. Let us know what you think about the weight to performance that should be coming out. And then once we actually get our hands on one, we'll do some testing and compare it to all the cameras we talked about in this video and hopefully be able to come up with an answer for you as to whether it's worth buying or not. For now, that's it. Please be sure to subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Let's get your comments below. And Chris, don't fly alone. <laughs>